know if the drum is kind of stuck on. Usually just take a brass hammer, hit it on the face surface. Use a brass hammer in case you hit one of the lug studs. It won't mess the threads up. So just give it a good, good whack and that breaks it loose usually. Broke loose. Pull it. And these, I could hear them grinding, so it's down to metal and metal. So the drums I'm going to replace, and the shoes, and I have a spring kit, and all that stuff. First things first, uh, when you take this off, I recommend just take a picture with your phone, and then you can kind of keep track of how it was. Sometimes the previous uh, person that changed them might have put it put it wrong, but you can at least check it with something or verify it against something else at that point. Usually start with anything that I can remove while everything's stationary. You don't want to be trying to take springs off when the stuff's like flopping around because then you're going to end up stabbing yourself with a screwdriver or pinching yourself with, you know, pliers or something like that. Usually start out with this little horseshoe clip. It's it's not spring loaded or anything. When, when it's uh, properly installed on there, it's pinched together on these ends. I have this one opened up, but then just uh, pry it down. Use your screwdriver to, to get it off all the way. And then if you don't have a spring kit, set it aside because usually a spring kit comes with that with that piece. This just holds the, the parking fulcrum in on the shoe. And then usually there's a, there's a spring clip. It's probably on the back side and try not to lose that. Now, if for some reason, you do have to, uh, a hard time getting the drum off. If you go from the back side, there's a little rubber window in there. I don't know if you can see it. It's right there. You can pop that out. And if you look on the back side here, there's this wheel for the self adjuster. And you can actually, from the back side, move this self adjuster, see how it's going out getting wider well there's this little tab you push in it's actually how it adjusts there you're clicking if you from the back side open that up and then spin this then it will actually loosen the uh, the tension of the shoes if you have a problem getting the, the drum off you just turn it from the back side until you kind of feel it stop but you can see as I'm turning it against of how it adjusts it out, it wants to stop. That's why you need to have something in there. You can either keep prying it a little bit, see how it climbs up. You can turn it a little bit and then push it in. And then turn it a little bit and push it in. Uh, it'll take you a while if it's adjusted way out because obviously these brakes are pretty worn. But if, you, if, you, if the drum was stuck on, you would need to do this to get it off. Now, sometimes the adjuster is frozen, and you can tell because you won't be able to move it at all. Then what I do is you see these spring spring posts here. On the back side, there's a, uh, a hole that they go through. You can actually cut the back side of these off because you'll, you'll, these will come with, the spring kit will come with these. And then it will release the tension of the shoes. And then when you pull the drum off, these shoes actually fold inward and kind of unlock from the drum. So there's a bunch of different ways of getting them out if you don't have special tools for it. But uh, for the most part, it's not that bad to get them out. But some, like I said, sometimes they have a ridge on them and you can't pull the drum directly off. Great tool to have for doing brakes is a needle nose uh, vice grip. Uh, this is a generic vice grip. It's a piece of crap, but it works okay. Uh, try to get a vice grip brand one if you're going to spend some money on it but use it to grab the springs and then you can pop the springs off so I'm just removing this spring because it's easy to get at and then the next one I'll go after this guy here I'll pull it out of there you can see it's around a self adjuster hooks on both sides then once I got that then I'll probably there's a real tiny spring on the bottom there. I'd get that one next. And then 
that retainer and then this retainer. And I'll show you again how to get those once you get to that point. So I got the top spring released. You can see it popped out of that hole, popped out of that hole. And I got the bottom spring released. And the next are these retainers. I have a tool for that, pretty easy. You don't necessarily need a tool, but you can, it's easier to do. Just press and turn them. Like you can see, sometimes you gotta put a whole bunch of pressure on them. For this one, uh, it was actually easier to use the vice grip to get the spring clip off. I just clipped it on there, pushed it and turned it. So that worked really well. Uh, when they get really rusty, that spring tool doesn't work as good because it, it doesn't grip the spring as well as the vice grip to, to turn it. So that shoe's ready to come off. There's a shoe off. I just put the spring back through with the post. Obviously, it went through this hole before. but And then here's the, uh, the little lever for the self-adjuster. And then here's how the spring hooks up to it. Just kind of hangs on the joint there around that section and then there's a little pin that goes through and looks like that's uh, goes through and then it's kind of pressed onto it but it looks like this thing just slides onto it so there's nothing special there and then these shoes and all this stuff I'm gonna reuse this part the adjuster lever but the springs and everything, I have a spring kit. The springs, the posts, the retainers, all that stuff should be replaced. I mean, if you for some reason can't get a spring kit or something, then you'll have to clean this stuff up. But I would recommend replacing that. It just makes it a lot, it just makes it go a lot quicker. It's worth the, uh, you know, 10, 15 bucks that it costs for a spring kit. And usually before I start putting new stuff back in, these friction pads here, here, and here, that's where the shoes slide back and forth on when you're pressing the brakes. You wanna clean those up. Now, if they still have a coating on it, which these are these don't, the coating's gone, then you wanna be careful. But if the coating's gone, just clean them down to bare metal. And usually just I paint them with a anti-seize compound. You could also use a, a anti-noise grease. It's like a real thick grease for disc brakes. You could use that too. The anti C seems to stay on there pretty good. And then same deal with this little uh, uh, flange here where the shoes sit in. I usually clean that up and then put a little bit of anti C in there too. The best tool to clean these little friction pads is one of these little wire brushes. Uh, you could use like a rotary burr or something like that too. If you got a lot of scale, the wire brush don't take it off. But if you don't have any power tools, you could use a flat screwdriver and just kind of scrape it maybe even a chisel you know usually scrapes the scale off pretty good other thing to check while you got the brakes out is you pull these boots back and this is the wheel cylinder you pull the boots back just to make sure that there's no leaking in there if you see brake fluid in there then you got to replace it see there's nothing in there sometimes the brake fluid comes all the way out but sometimes it doesn't come past the boot. With the boot pulled back, no fluid in there. So we're good to go with that. That's cleaned up, the rotary burr. Now I'll go for the anti-seize. I'll just put a light coat on there. Put too much on there and then it'll end up getting on the shoes, but it's a light coat just to kind of keep it smooth. I'll wipe that stuff off where I touched it. I have the parts kind of lined up with the spring kit, the retainer cup, the spring. I got the post in place. And I'll just show you the shoes. There's the primary shoe that has that pin for the self adjuster. And the way they're made on here, the shoe, you know, this is the primary shoe for the driver's side. This is a secondary shoe for the driver's side. You can see they're the same piece of steel, but the position of the shoe. It's actually glued on in a different spot. And then obviously this one, it has a pin that's, you know, basically riveted in it. And then, uh, you know, the parking lever goes into this one. So there is a difference. You just kind of got to figure it out, get them lined up before you start putting them on. Got the 
secondary shoe in place. You can see it's kind of in on the bottom there, and then that uh, horseshoe clip, you got to pinch the ends on it, and then just kind of get it into place there, just like that. Self-adjuster lever on the primary shoe. Just put the hole over the pin. Goes on the pin like that, and then it uh, goes in that slot. And then once it's in the slot, you can see it moves and stops like that. And then if you look at it, see that little U shape right there? That's where the spring hooks down. You can see it with the spring installed, hooked in the groove there, and then down to this hole. So now we can put this shoe on. See the other shoe position, how the self-adjuster has to go, because every time you push on the brakes, if it moves a lot, then it pushes this lever up, lifts it up, and then lets it back down. So that's how it self-adjusts. So you have to Make sure you put it on so it, you know, goes in that position so it self-adjusts properly. If you put it backwards, it looks like you can still fit it, but it'll be real tight and it won't work properly. Adjuster with the new spring on it. You can see that I cleaned it up. I didn't have to take any corrosion off of it, so I just basically wiped it clean and then put Never Seize, you know, in a bunch of different spots underneath here so it turns. And then on the thread, so it turns, and I turned it all the way in, but not tight, just turn it until it stops. And now I'm going to sneak this in before I mount the other shoe here, because obviously if you don't put this in right away, then you have to pry springs back to get it to fit in. So it's easier just to put it in before you, before you put this retainer on. You just kind of let the shoe hang there and put it on in there. Look at these grooves here. There's one deeper groove, and then there's one shallower groove and then if you look at where it goes see one the actually the shoe matches up with the deeper groove and then the you can see that the that's how it has to go because the shoe will stop at that groove if you put it the other way it won't fit on there right you have to go where the the parking lever fits in the deeper groove and then the uh, the shoe fits up against the shallower stop this spring on it was pretty easy on this side but uh maybe i might try hooking it in that side first and then doing this side but i'd actually use the spring pliers to do it because that thing was hard to get on there but it's hooked on there i just have the bottom spring left and then everything's all in one piece last check before the drum goes on. Uh, looks like the you know self adjusters down all the way. Everything's clipped. I got the bottom spring on there. It's held in there real nice. I always like to make sure. I just usually take a brake cleaner on a rag. I just wipe the shoes to make sure there's no uh, fingerprints on there with grease, that sort of thing. And then uh, obviously wipe the the drum off. This the surface before you put it on too and then I, you can slip fit it and keep adjusting it till it kind of slips on there a little harder rather than pulling the whole thing apart and adjusting it so i also uh usually put anti-seize on the hub here and then just on this flange and it keeps it from rusting tight and then in order to make sure that everything's working and adjust the stuff up if you just turn this you can hear it click and then you can see this adjusts it out you can hear it click you know it's working right I usually click it out a little bit and then slip fit the drum to make sure it's not dragging and you can kind of keep doing that and get that in the ballpark and that's usually adjusted pretty good then I was always told like with the tire on that you should be able to rotate it one time you know with the brakes on there and that's adjusted right but you can also 
go inside, press the brake pedal down, and that'll reset the position of the shoes because you can see it's kind of dragging unevenly. That's because the shoes aren't centered perfectly. But once you press the brakes, they'll go out, center, and then go back, and then you can try it again. With the first couple brake presses, you can see it makes it around one turn. So I'm considered that adjusted. So I'm going to go ahead and put the wheel on. So all set.